We all love sci-fi movies. This is a genre of movies that can introduce all kinds of cool science ideas that might be real or not. That's why it's called science fiction. But what's especially great about realistic sci-fi or hard sci-fi is that the scenarios feel relatable and you get to learn stuff. In this video, we're gonna recommend some hard sci-fi movies that you really need to watch. For a list like this, you gotta start with The Martian. Ridley Scott's recent smash hit was such a crowd pleaser that it inspired a genuine interest in Mars for everyday people. But we can't give him all the credit as the screenplay was a pretty faithful adaptation of the novel by Andy Weir. The Martian puts us on the ground of the Red Planet with Mark Watney, played to affable perfection by Matt Damon. A Martian storm leaves him stranded on the planet, and while Earth works diligently to arrange a rescue mission, Watney has to survive on a planet with no organic matter. While the movie and book take artistic license with certain things, The Martian is pretty famous for being relatively scientifically accurate. Now, the actual rescue operation to save Watney is definitely leaving the realism behind for an exciting climax. But we appreciate the trade-off because it's a lot of fun. Highlights of this movie's realism include the fact that it takes eight months to go from from Earth to Mars, and the truth that it's actually possible to grow plants in Martian soil. This is all especially impressive because Andy Weir, who wrote all this, isn't actually a space expert either. He learned everything he knows from books and the internet. Not so different from us, eh? One of the best sci-fi movies of the 2010s, The Martian is an absolute must watch. Like it basically goes without saying, but we said it. From there. We're going into some heady territory with Interstellar. You can always count on Christopher Nolan to tackle some of the brainiest subjects in his movies. The man who once made a movie about dreams within dreams has also made a movie about black holes and time travel. And while lots of movies exist on all of these subjects, you can't beat Nolan's commitment to bringing the science of black holes and time to life. Fun fact, Nolan actually used the movie budget to fund the development of new software that could more accurately simulate the appearance and behavior of a black hole. That's an impressive level of intention to detail. For a movie whose plot is so wild, it can be hard to believe its realism. Interstellar was also pretty accurate in its portrayal of time distortion. In a weird twist of relativity physics, time genuinely does slow down around super heavy objects, which is why when Matthew McConaughey returns home, lots of time has passed. On the other hand, the timey-wimey stuff from the climax of the movie is probably less realistic. The story, of course, takes place on an Earth that's on the verge of collapse from climate change. All the worst nightmares of climate disasters have come true. Another realistic element, BT dubs, and now we must find ourselves a new home. The movie also tackles concepts of space travel and wormholes. Nolan is is one of the masters of blending heavy science fiction topics with a rock-solid emotional core. You'll go into Interstellar to learn about black holes, and you'll come out with heartstrings thoroughly tugged. The next movie is Contact, which walks right up the edge of being a documentary instead of a movie. Contact also represents Matthew McConaughey's second appearance on this list. What a coincidence! In most first Contact movies, aliens are the ones who make the first contact with humans. They do this through some alien technology that the humans don't understand, and the screenwriters don't have to explain. But there's absolutely a chance that humans might make the first contact, and that's thanks to SETI. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Project is using gigantic satellite dishes to listen in on radio waves passing through the cosmos. The point where contact goes from fact to fiction is that in the movie, Seti actually picks up a communication from an alien intelligence. We go back into realism mode as Jodie Foster's character, Dr. Ellie Arroway, becomes a target of the National Security Agency and religious fanatics who each have their own opinions on what should be done with the message received. There are even IRL scientists and astronomers in the movie and consulting offset, keeping everything 
even more realistic and grounded. This movie doesn't so much explore a scientific concept as much as it explores how the human race would respond to a scientific discovery. You don't get too many movies that do it as well as Contact, which is why you shouldn't skip this. Speaking of speaking with aliens, another movie that dove into this subject was Arrival. Bad news, gang. Spaceships from beyond this world have landed in 12 different locations. They want something, but no one can understand the language these honest-to-goodness aliens are speaking. Luckily, Louise Banks is here to save the day. Amy Adams' character is a philologist, or an expert of languages, an unlikely protagonist for a sci-fi movie, but it makes more sense than you think. The people who made Arrival clearly put a lot of thought into how humans will someday have to figure out how we can understand and communicate with species beyond Earth. We see accurate portrayals of the work of deciphering and interpreting languages. It's also worth pointing out the fact that the aliens don't necessarily take very well to the atmosphere on Earth, which a lot of movies take for granted. That being said, Arrival does put the fiction in science fiction too. We can't tell you what we mean by that, but let's just say that the plot really takes some unexpected twists and turns. If you like first contact movies, or if you're interested in languages at all, Arrival is a must watch. It's honestly worth watching if you like movies in general, because it's a really cool take on a worn out genre. Let's get even closer to reality with the movie Her. You know, if you think about it, the movie Her must have felt like pretty soft sci-fi when it came out in 2013. Apple and Google had both just recently revealed their digital assistants. And while they had some functionality, the idea of an assistant having a personality you could fall in love with was pretty unrealistic. Well, almost 10 years later, Her is looking a lot more prescient. Google Assistant and Alexa have such an insane wealth of data to rely on that they've become impossibly useful assistants that can do basically everything a human assistant could. Sure, they don't have personalities necessarily, but the technology for an AI to develop a personality is out there. Remember Tay? That was Microsoft's attempt to create a realistic personality by using machine learning algorithms on Twitter. We laugh off the Tay thing because she turned out to be just the most awful person ever. But you gotta realize that the experiment was a success, and that was in 2016. Now, we have a fledgling industry of virtual influencers ready to take over our social media, with examples including Lil Michaela, who can be found hawking Samsung's phones on Instagram. There was also a virtual rapper going by the name FN Mecca. Could you ask these people out? Well, try sliding in their DMs and try not to feel like Joaquin Phoenix. Consider revisiting her, not just for Phoenix's amazing acting performance or the Oscar-winning screenplay, but because the future it promised might be closer than you thought. And finally, you really can't have a list like this without 2001 A Space Odyssey. For most film buffs, this is Stanley Kubrick's magnum opus, and that's a hard title to give out because nearly every movie he ever made could be called a masterpiece. And for the purposes of this video, it's surprising how well the movie nailed the space travel aspects of the story. Considering that it was written years before the moon landings, the astronauts we see in the movie aren't just action heroes you salute as they walk up to the rocket, but they're scientists themselves and highly trained in how to actually pilot the rocket. They also embark on realistic EVA walks to do maintenance on their ship. But the most realistic aspect of the movie is probably good old HAL 9000. To Kubrick and screenwriting partner Arthur C. Clarke, the things that they wrote HAL to be capable of were probably softer sci-fi. But computerized maintenance alerts are now a standard feature of many plants and infrastructure works. As for HAL being evil and having his own goal, well, we did talk about how AIs are getting closer than ever to having their own personalities. In fact, what if HAL is actually Tay installed on a rocket computer. There's some food for thought for you. As for whether you should watch this movie, the answer is obviously yes. But be warned that this movie doesn't
doesn't look or feel like a lot of movies do these days. It's a slow and ponderous film, with long stretches where there's no dialogue, only the iconic score. That's it for today's video. Which movie from the list is your favorite? And why not recommend your own hard sci-fi faves in the comments section below? But whatever you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.